Black History Month is over February, of course, but WKYC had a good thing going throughout February with the students from Cleveland Public Schools to celebrate. Tonight, Channel 3's Ross Mitchell shows how art mixed with technology becoming a creative canvas for local students who see the possible. Students from the Cleveland Metropolitan School District took a fresh approach to spotlighting the achievements of African-American history makers who hail from Cleveland. Following tons of research, Students from Cleveland High School for Digital Arts use their talents in graphic design, animation, and digital music to create tributes to barrier breakers like Dorothy Dandridge, Larry Doby, and Jesse Owens. Students from the video game design class created a virtual reality museum, and another student wove all that research into a play. Okay, girls, it's showtime. And then students from Cleveland School of the Arts got into the act. They took the script for the play, I Dream of Cleveland, and brought it to life. Similar to an urban A Christmas Carol, the play centers around a girl who has no interest in studying black history, but is visited by the spirit of Langston Hughes, a graduate of Cleveland Central High School. Through him, she begins to understand the struggles and significance of those who came before her. The play depicted heroes like Garrett Morgan pitching his invention of the gas mask on a show like Shark Tank, and acting pioneers Dorothy Dandridge and Ruby D talking about their achievements on a modern day show with stars like Halle Berry. Not only did the students learn about their hometown's important role in black history, they also learned to appreciate the stories of the men and women who paved the way for present and future generations. And that is Russ Mitchell reporting. The play was performed at five Cleveland schools in front of more than 1,500 students, and more than a dozen students appeared on Channel 3 throughout February in a series of vignettes where they explained their black history projects. Shout out to the Bone Thugs and Harmony. Me, Michael, and Justin, tribute to you. Musically requested from WKYC directly across the street, Channel 3. You have won both Grammy and American awards. I remember growing up, they cranked your music in backyards while the smoke of the grill starts reaching to the stars via coals driving by, bumping your music in the cars. My name is Dylan Palmer, and I am from the Cleveland High School for Digital Arts, and I am a black history maker. Take a knee to take a stand, feeling like I'm capping it. I do what I want, standing kneeling on my field. You take the pick, I'm getting sick of all this back and forth. Give me the brick, I build the wall so tall that Trumpet supporters are born to copy it. But this is another story, mentally I'm inside purgatory. For the back that's of those folks who told me not to worry and watch the red fall down my back and said that it wasn't bloody. I guess I grew in there to take it there. Now I would cut aside the pebble as my first was down that well. Life gave me lemonade, it blew up in a minute. Yellow hand grenade, I guess that's why they caught it. Many made, but I already backed away with the quickest fade away. It wasn't gonna happen to me, I'm not today. Even if you broke the play, even if you look up to the Lord to pray, I vow that I silently am here to stay. You can never get rid of me, might as well call me friend of me. Throw cold in me, death in the industry. Never gonna stop the heat of speech, so truthfully, vibe with me, take a seat. You can't defeat how the retail of eternity is not what will come for me. So fish swim along comfortably and grab the hook for me. I saw you something aerial, you'll never find underneath the sea. They threw me in the jungle, he ain't break a bone. When we had to boil your bumble, he ain't break a bone. When I began to fold and fumble, he ain't break a bone. He ain't break a bone. Got people breathing down my neck, but they ain't breaking bones. Now everybody know my name and yeah, it's set in stone. Got so go sit up for me, and then yeah, I'm getting to them. So why they try and they knock me back, but yet I am too strong. strong. People do try to run over me, yeah, they can barely escape by. My ghosts are close to me, dropping these bars religiously. Even though I am religious, the power said to me, precision is size. The word that I speak, the evil of finding the answer to me. Insisting on those who do not retreat. I am the power that cannot be beat. This isn't my shoes, shoes. My future is next, next. The ones who are rivals, rivals. I gotta be red, red, red. All of my foes, foes. I put in the check, the check. My power increases, increases. No need for a tech, a tech. Hi, my name is Langston Hughes. I'm a famous activist, poet, and playwright. I'm one of the first innovators for the poetry known as Jazzy Poetry. This month, we honor Langston Hughes through theater. My name is Trayvon Haywood. I attend Cleveland School of the Arts, and I am a black history maker.
question. What famous African American from Cleveland inspires you? <laughs> yes, Bianca, do you have a question? Yes, I do. Why? Why what? Just why? I don't understand the question. The question is why? Why is this something that we should care about? Why? Okay, you see the list on the board? There are sports figures, Jesse Owens, Jim Brown, Larry Doby, Frank Robinson, politicians, Carl and Louis Stokes, Stephanie Tubbs Jones, community leaders, Florence Fairfax, John O'Holly, Eliza Bryant, famous people, Halle Berry, Ruby D, Dorothy Dandridge, Steve Harvey, the, the last slave returned to the South before the Civil War, Lucy Bagby, and Langston Hughes, a great American. Yes, Bianca, what is it? What if none of the people on the list inspire you? Well, I'm sure someone on what this list. They're only on that list because they're black, live in Cleveland, and it's Black History Month. That isn't exactly the Are point. we supposed to care about them in March? Their contributions. What about on November 16th at 1.30 p.m. and it's sunny outside? <laughs> Bianca, do you have a point? My point is why should we even bother? What have they ever done for any of us? Let's move on, shall we? Is there anyone else who did the assignment? Anyone? Yes, Bianca. I suggest that you didn't do the assignment. Who said I didn't do it? I got it right here. Okay, if you did do the assignment, which one of these famous? I'll just read it. I will never amount to anything. Audition. What audition? She could be. I could be what? She's not doing 
will want to see her. He'll be here in a moment. Who will want to see me, and who will be here in a moment? What does she do? Does she sing? Does she dance? Is she a comic? <laughs> She's a comedian. What She's are you guys her. talking about? <laughs> what audition, and who will be here? She's what have you gotten me into? Ladies, ladies, come on. Time is running. Produced the first African American musical. Shut right along! In 1921. 1921? 1921? You two done yet? Okay, girls, it's showtime. Music hit it. Sure, people of color and women were hired for government jobs. This was the 60s, so we needed people like 
<laughs> in all aspects of our government, I also established a nonprofit between the private sector and the government called Cleveland Now! Oh, Cleveland Now! Cleveland. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa! Through Cleveland Now, we raised tens of millions of dollars for urban health clinics, housing projects, recreational centers. We gave people what they needed to live more healthier and happier lives while increasing their educational and professional opportunities. That sounds all nice, so why is Alcoway still a hot mess? Excuse me? In the 60s, we dealt with riots. So it was understandable in a way and my job to try to help people who are upset about police brutality, housing conditions, lack of economic opportunity. So what's new? These were national problems. <laughs> we were facing the decline of urban manufacturing, white flight, the decline of urban tax base, which in turn Im impact revenue for infrastructure. Yeah, 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 schools. you lost me at the jump. So it's white flight like when a white person rode into your black man. <laughs> uh, in a way. It's when a number of white residents in Cleveland feeling scared flee to the suburbs. But it wasn't just white people, it was some black people too. And with them, they took the taxes that would have paid for many vital public services. But you should really talk to my brother Lewis. He served for three decades in the House of Representatives in Washington, D.C. Okay, thank you. No, thank you, young lady. <laughs> and there you have it, Carl B. Stokes, the first black mayor of Cleveland, the first black mayor of any big American city. Yes. So, why haven't I heard of Well, you must have. You're the one who's dreaming. Ever thought about being mayor? <laughs> What's so funny? You're an idiot! <laughs> I'm a girl, you moron. It's bad enough if you're black and a man, but me? A sister? <laughs> okay, you got me here, wherever here is. Who will you make me meet next? How about some other sisters? <laughs> Yes, I do. Is that so? Well, why is that? What do you mean? 
Why is that? Why is it up to you? Just because it is. Well, you say it was up to me because of her. And it was up to me because of her. And it was up to me because of her. See, you are a very lucky person, you know that? Very lucky to be born when you were. Mm, she ain't getting it. She's as thick as my mom's pay home. Emma, oh, honey, honey, <laughs> let me tell you a little story. By the time I was born, my father was beating my mother on a daily basis. I didn't learn to read until I was older than you. Didn't have a chance to go to school. I had to make a living singing and dancing. Oh, see, she was magnificent. Yes. Such talent. Got to the cotton club with my sisters by 1938. Yes, the promise. Got yes. married, got pregnant, but my child was born, as they said back then, retarded. Oh. I had to make enough money to pay for her, but Hollywood wasn't interested in a person that looked like me. Unless, of course, it was to play a maid, mm -hmm. a slave, mm -hmm. or an African princess. Mm -hmm. I know all about that. It has much changed. So I sang in cabarets, mm -hmm. headlined in Vegas. I was drawing in thousands, but wasn't allowed to eat or even take the elevators in the same hotels where I was performing. Across the country, black people weren't even allowed to sit in the front of the bus. You see, this is why my husband and I devoted so much of our lives to the civil rights movement. We marched so that you could decide what you wanted to do. I would have never done Monsters Ball if it wasn't for these two ladies. Oh, baby, I was so glad that they got Academy Awards. I'm telling you oh, what they didn't. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. We're here standing on these ladies' shoulders, and girl, you may So let me ask y'all a few questions. All right. All right. What would y'all rather have me doing? I lived my life, and this is the life that was given to me. Y'all have no idea what goes on in my life, in my neighborhood, and in my family. It is not flowers and sunshine. Okay, yeah, I'm free to dream, thank you. But dreams don't mean anything when life is stacked against you. So thank you for making your damn movies and thank you for marching. But at the end of the day, I still have to go home and do what I have to do. And I may be standing on all y'all old shoulders, but that does not compare to the whole world standing on my damn head. You're right. She's right. Yes, yeah, she is. It's true, the world don't care about you. Never did, never will. Look, you're lucky to be here. <laughs> That's right. You know what? It reminds me of that speech of Mama's from a raisin in the sun, the one where she's talking to Beneath and Ruth, talking about her husband, Big Walter, talking about what it's like to have a dream in a world that doesn't care about you because of the color of your skin. I know what you're talking about. Hey, hey, you know I did this one night before our school audition. I knew these things were coming off sooner or later. Big Walter will come in here some nice and just sit down on the couch and look at the rugs and look at me and then back at the rug and then back at me and then I know then he was really down! And then, Lord, when I lost that baby, little Claude, I almost thought I was gonna lose Big Walter too. See, that man, he grieved himself. He was one to love his children, crazy about his children. Now, Lord knows there was plenty wrong with Walter Young. Hard-headed, mean, kind of wild with women. Plenty wrong with him. But he sure loved his children. He always wanted them to have something, to be something. And that's where brother gets all these notions out of him. See, Big Walter used to say, he get right wet in the eyes sometimes, lean his head back with the water standing in his eyes and say, it seems like God didn't see fit to give the black man nothing but dreams. But he did give us children, make those dreams seem worthwhile. <laughs> yes, he could talk like that, don't you know? Yes, a fine man. He just could never catch up with his dreams. That's all. So, you see, you do what you gotta do, baby. It's your life. You only got one. Read the cards, girl. And that concludes today's presentation of the team. We'd like to thank our guests, Ruby D, Halle Berry, Yvette Nicole Brown, and Dorothy Dandridge. Give it up for these wonderful ladies and shoulders. Impressive women. You know, I was just saying, a fine man just couldn't catch up with his dreams. That's all. You see, dreams can inspire you, but they'll also give you something to fail at. It doesn't matter. No one's going to give us a shot anyway. I see. You do. You see what I'm saying? Because I don't think you do. I think you keep treating me like I'm stupid. Like you understand how the world works and I don't. Look at actually the rest of people like us out there. So when I ask you, do you see what I'm saying or do you understand what I'm talking about? I'm thinking you have not a clue what I'm talking about. You feel me? Now I want to wake up. Uh, 
Not yet. I too served in the military, and when I got out, I went on to college, you know, law school. 
1968, I was the first black person from the state of Ohio to be elected to the U.S. House of Representatives in Washington, D.C. But first, let me give you a bit of history. Go on. The day I sworn in with three other African Americans, we joined a few other black members of Congress. And the nine of us constituted the largest body of African Americans to ever sit in Congress since 1875. And that year, immediately following the Civil War, there were six blacks serving the House and one in the Senate. All were free slaves. Well, that doesn't sound like a lot. It wasn't, but it got better. From 1875 to 1900, there were a total of 22 blacks serving the House and two in the Senate. But due to activities from the Ku Klux Klan. They were around back then? Oh, yes, very much so. And also around 1900, due to the enactment of the so called Black Laws, all African Americans in Congress were defeated. <coughs> but the last to leave was a man named George White, which he said, This, Mr. Speaker, might be the Negro's temporary farewell to the United States Congress, but like the Phoenix, we will rise up and fall again. Okay, rise up, rise up, oh, rise up. No, baby, it took some time and help from millions like Martin Luther King, Malcolm, Shirley Chisholm, Bob Mothercar. But soon, things did begin to change. I served on House Appropriations Committee. Chair House of Ethics Committee and established the Black Congressional Caucus. I fought for veterans and public services in Cleveland and around the country. Wow, I mean, your brother Carl was cool and all, but you're cooler. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and there you have it, coming live from wherever we are. Berlin in 1936, we have 
Fellas, come on. What do you mean, fellas? Oh, my God. Tomorrow, 
bright before us like a flame. Yesterday, a night dawn day, a sundown day, and dawn today, broad arch above the road we came, we march. You are such a nerd. <laughs> Second hand. All 
raised a great deal of money and marched with hundreds of members in civil rights protests led by Martin Luther King Jr. I led my church to fight for civil rights in Cleveland, fighting city halls, social institutions, and unions. Under my leadership, the Oliver Church has grown to be one of the largest and most influential churches in Ohio, from a congregation of 500 to 5,000. And my name is Kanye. <laughs> 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 Nobody will dare say to me in the kitchen then. Besides, they'll see how beautiful I am and be ashamed. I, too, am America. Who are you? Hear ye, hear ye. The court is now in session. Judge Daniel R. Tilden, preside. Until this ungrateful child decided to run away. 
She followed the Underground Railroad. You thieving criminals, all of you. We are the Order! Order in the court! I heard she was in Pittsburgh and then she came here to Cleveland. Girl, is this true? Were you purchased legally by this man? I was bought, yes. <laughs> you will either be quiet or you will be removed from my court. Is it true that you ran away? Yes. Mr. Gosh won't proceed. Well, as you know, you honor, Your Honor, because of the righteous fugitive slave law, I have the right to come up here and claim my property. And this girl right here, she's my property. And we all <laughs> All right, all right, look, it's all written right here in the papers. You know, I do not care if she is the last slave to return to her rightful slave owner. And there might be a war between the North and the South. But for right now, it is your legal duty to return this piece of property to me as you return any piece of stolen property. Quiet! Quiet! Miss Lucy, do you have anything to say? Do you even understand me, girl? Say something, Miss Lucy. If you have nothing to add to this proceeding, girl, then it is my duty to say something. In accordance with federal law, I hereby state that Lucy Bagby. Wait, Mr. Judge, she does have something to say. Miss Lucy, this is your shot. You have to say something. If you don't, he's going to send you back. Your Honor. Speak up, girl. I do have something I would like to say. Then speak. You got this. <clears throat> your Honor. My mama told me that I was worth something. That I'll be bought, sold, beat, and chased down like a dog, but I'm still worth something. She told me this is to the last day I done seen of the day. This man put his money down and took me away. Now, I be keeping my mama's voice in my head all the time while out there picking beans in the hot sun, cleaning up their baby's mess, tending pigs, getting beef, praying them that the next one that this man calls on in the night or sold to one of those big old plantations too many miles for free. I can't hear her now, and there's nothing you can say to draw her out. So I'll go. I gotta go, but that ain't the end of it. I will never give up. In fact, I'll get stronger. And maybe one day, as you walk in the lawn in the street of Euclid at Chester Avenue, you gonna see this colored woman coming your way. And just like that, it'll hit you like a splash of water in the face that that be Lucy Bag because I'm coming back and I'm coming back as a free woman. <laughs> and as I walk past you with my chin up, I'ma keep right on going. I'ma keep right on going. I'ma keep right on going. In concurrence with federal law, I hereby state that Lucy Bagby is the property of William S. Goshorn. And Miss Lucy will hereby be returned to Virginia as Mr. Goshorn's property. Officers of the court, remove Miss Lucy and see to it that she is returned to a previous state of servitude. This court is now adjourned. Yes, Bianca, do you have a question? Uh, 
Langston Hughes, he wrote that poem. Bianca, I'm not sure. We no, can seriously, he wrote that and many more. Bianca, I don't know. I, I just don't know. Okay, I gave you guys another assignment, and I want it on my desk Monday morning, guys. Monday morning, no later. Bianca, what is it? <sighs> Dreams by Bianca Jasmine Rachel Washington. Dreams are my way to make sense of the world. One less reality check. Dreams are women on a mission, no more little girls. One less setback. Dreams mean young men with an understanding of respect, but still with the fear of neglect. That's a dream turned nightmare. One less bullet sent. You can't idolize the apple pie life. Can imagine the picket fence or the perfect wife. One less broken heart. An opportunity to change the American dream and put the hopes in the next generation. One less wannabe gangster. A dream of an army of leaders that will shake the world. I have a dream of the beauty within that beautiful girl. She holds the key to unlock what she deserves. That's one less girl in the news. That boy dreams of a life outside of the streets, a life of more than just making ends meet, but still setting a legacy for his younger brother, something more than no lights and a struggle. I dream of a world where I can see the sun, and when I walk beside you, I'm not in fear of a gun. I dream of more than just likes and views before CEO positions and less kids in the news. We don't choose who loves us or who we get to love back, but realize that there shouldn't be a fear in this world that can hold us back. Dreams are your alternative to reality, and without it, you are stuck in a memory. In 1916, Garrett Morgan made history by rescuing several workmen who'd been trapped in a water tunnel 50 feet beneath Lake Erie with his gas masks. This February, I will be telling his heroic story with a film presentation. My name is Marvin Watts from Cleveland High School for the Digital Arts, and I'm a black history maker. 
This Black History Makers project is a partnership between WKYC and the Cleveland Metropolitan School District. Langston Hughes is a writer and poet. He was the prince of the Harlem Renaissance, which is the African-American artistic movement of the 1920s. This February, we celebrate his contributions with the recreation of his poem, Dreams. My name is Daenerys McClary from Cleveland High School for Digital Arts, and I am a Black History Maker. This Black History Makers project is a partnership between WKYC and the Cleveland Metropolitan School District. James Cleveland Jesse Owens is a four-time Olympic gold medalist and excelled in both track and field. He made his home here in Northeast Ohio and history in the Olympics. This month I designed a game to honor his achievements. My name is Gabby Rizari from the Cleveland High School for Digital Arts and I'm a Black History Maker. This Black History Makers project is a partnership between WKYC and the Cleveland Metropolitan School District.